Hello again everyone, we are Gaming by Gaslight and welcome back to EU4 as the Golden Horde. So you'll notice that our borders have changed a little bit since the last episode. And also, before I begin, I want to apologize because, as several sharp-eyed viewers noticed, uh, episode 5 and 6, for a moment there, were actually the same episode. I, I went back over the raw footage and I don't know how I ended up making that mistake because I clearly label everything. But apparently that happened. I am really sorry about that, and hopefully it'll never happen again. I couldn't figure out exactly, like I said, what the issue was that caused me to mess that one up so badly. But, uh, I rolled back just to be safe in case I had missed something. And now we have this alternate timeline where Crimea is my vassal instead of Fyodoro. Uh, Genoa is allied to Lithuania, who broke out of their personal union of Poland. Uh, Muscovy is actually getting wrecked. And Kazan is also a vassal instead of uh, Peshkira. Yeah, that's who it usually is. Because I, the, basically what happened is the Uzbeks got some stuff and uh, stuff broke away and so on and so forth. But anyway, hopefully there will be no further problems. But to be double safe, I think after this recording session, assuming nothing goes wrong this time, I'm probably going to try making save backups so that... I mean, I should be doing that anyway. That's just good practice, but... Yeah, I'll try to make some backups so that if something like this happens, I can just restart at the beginning of the last uh, last uh, recording session if something goes wrong in this recording session. Anyway, so that's enough. Uh, basically, uh, Korokoinlu is getting destroyed. The Ottomans are invading Korokoinlu, which actually scares the crap out of me because I actually have a truce with them until 84 and can't go to war with them again. And I mean, the Ottomans are just ungodly powerful. Like, ungodly. It's ridiculous. And the the thing that annoys the crap out of me is, theoretically, Austria and Hungary, because they're usually by now either allied or in a personal union, they could take the Ottomans, but they don't. And that allows the Ottomans to run rampant. So, <laughs> that's unfortunate. I'm also in a situation where I feel like I can't really expand, because... Uh, I do have a lot of, um, yeah, really strong people surrounding me. I mean, Muscovy is our next target because, fortunately, they seem to be very weak. I have to wait seven years, though. I and mean, I could actually go to war with the Timurids, apparently. Hmm. Who's no guy allied with? They are also allied with the Timurids. So if I attacked no, if I attack no guy now, I don't know what it is. The Timurids, like they are really strong this game. But then again, it's only 71. It, we're also like what almost five minutes in at this point probably, and I haven't even unpaused. Hopefully you guys don't mind. I mean, U4 is one of those games where sometimes you just have to slow down and assess your situation, or you're just going to get wrecked. Also, you'll notice that uh, Lithuania has a lot of allies, so it's going to be really, really hard to actually go to war with them. Because, I mean, they're pretty powerful. They have the Teuton. Actually, they're at war with Aragon right now. Why is that? Oh, right, because Genoa. I wonder. If I went to war with Genoa now, could I slip in a war? Or if I took Tver and then came after Novgorod? I mean, Denmark's kind of in here. Is it even possible to get an alliance with Denmark? The answer is maybe. It could be possible. I don't really know if turning my attitude to friendly actually increases the odds of the AI deciding to be friendly to me as well, but it's, excuse me, worth a try. Anyway, Tver has... Oh, they're allied with Perm. Could I vassalize Perm? I mean, I'd rather conquer them and then raise their provinces, but... Of course, they're being attacked by rebels right now, so it's entirely possible they wouldn't want anything to do with a war. Also, the only reason my troops are all the way over here is because I'm scared that Lithuania is going to declare war on me any day now. And my economy can't quite afford my army, which is kind of ridiculous. I think once some of the... Uh, economy in these provinces goes down, that'll be fixed, but until then we have to wait. Oh, what's this? Royal marriage from Kazan? Sure, why not? Also, 
I mean, we unpaused for like a second there. I might as well unpause again at slow speed. Yeah, as it turns out, Kazan is a historical rival with the Golden Horde. So if you're playing as the Golden Horde, it's probably not a smart idea to release Kazan as a vassal. If you can help it. I mean, I was being lazy and just wanted to save up on uh, spending admin points. Now we're actually not losing that much money. I could just bump up my capital a little bit. Almost. And I kind of need the admin points. There we go. And in case you're wondering why I focus on the capital, it's because the capital can never be owned by the tribes. Or any estate, so it seems like the safest bet. Uh, I did, yes. No, wait, no, I didn't. I thought I'd move that all the way up. I'll blast it all. <laughs> well, we're still losing money then. Oh well. Alright, I'll uh, cancel that for now. We'll go to war. Oh, Perm actually is willing to go to war. That's interesting. Do I take the- do I force vassalize them? I don't really want to. But I could. And naturally none of my allies will- will ever come to help me. That, that's something that kind of annoys me about the whole Cossacks update is that your allies are much less willing to help you in wars. And yet they seem to- plus, they never ever call me into their wars so I can never build up favors with them. At a reasonable rate. Or so it feels. Uh, are we making money again? What's going on here? Why are my forts on? Oh right, I have it set so they'll automatically turn on because I'm terrified of... I'm terrified of my neighbors, basically. Uh, yeah, I, I don't eat and really need that many people here. Do I have a siege leader? I do not. And I don't have access to cannons yet, that's unfortunate. Uh, we'll a reasonable sized army nearby because I am scared of perm coming over here. I mean, basically all perm is doing at this point is just cock blocking me because I can't piece them out while perm is in the war. And actually I could get over there. Let's uh, get some military access through the Uzbeks. I mean what I was hoping to do was go to war with Muscovy then with perm. That way I could uh, conquer my way through Muscovy. Then I could go to War of Perm, and that way I could cut off the Uzbeks from further expansion in this general direction. I mean, that makes sense, doesn't it? I think it does. How many soldiers are we looking at here? They have 7,000, and they're Orthodox Zealots. That's going to make converting all this a, just a big mess. Anyway, I'm going to continue... ...fabricating on my ally here. I'm sure they don't mind. Oh, uh, you know what, I'll fabricate on Kora Koinlu instead. Pretty sure I have all the claims I can against Muscovy. Who I can go to war with when again? In 78. So I have to wait six years. Fortunately, I get one year before Lithuania can get in on the action. So that's a good thing. How is Lithuania doing? It's still zero. What's going on here exactly? Aragonese conquest of Corsica. That's probably going to be a very indecisive war that goes nowhere if I had to guess. It always does, really. Oh, what do you know? There's... Uh, you're, how come I'm not getting the little thing saying that there's going to be a fight in this particular province? Let's uh, go over here and then back over here. Oh yeah, I have scootage enabled, so they're actually not in the war. That's right. Because otherwise Kazan would be much too rebellious. Uh, as you can see, I also have very low manpower, so I'm kind of unwilling to engage in any serious fighting here. Is it possible to convince Perm to leave the war? Probably not. <clears throat> I'd have to siege their capital and I really don't want to. Having negative 10 war score in the first 12... I, I have 89% war score, thank you very much, so I don't really know what you're talking about. Alright, 34%. Uh, Perm vassal, can't do that apparently. That's unfortunate. Uh, do I go to war with Perm now? I mean, the thing is, I don't want a long truce with them, because again, I want to... I want to be able to go with, to war with them as soon as I'm done with Muscovy. So I guess I just sit here and wait. 
Do I fabricate on you? I don't really want to break our alliance at this point. Not yet. I mean, they they desire my provinces. I desire their provinces. Uh, I'm allied to the arrival of the Uzbeks. I'll improve some relations, I guess. <clears throat> Excuse me. Anyway. I mean, we're kind of at a point where expansion's going to be a little bit difficult. Though if we're lucky, we will be able to expand into Novgorod without Lithuania poking their nose into things. Oh no! The Uzbeks are at war! Ah, oh, I should have known they'd take advantage. Go on, Crimea. Conquer them. I wonder. Uh, of course, the problem is, if I vassalize them, that's just going to result in... Uh, some bad stuff happening. Uh, do I really want 50 Diplo points? Uh, the answer is probably yes, even at the cost of inflation. I feel I probably worry about inflation a little too much, to be honest. Ugh. Damn it. <laughs> well, that's unfortunate. Um, You know what? No, I'll keep the guy free for when we can peace out. I wonder, if I... If I take their capital, do you think I would be able to vassalize Perm? That would bring me into a war with the Uzbeks that I don't really want to fight, but... It'd be interesting. And anyway, let's just speed a long time, because really nothing's going to happen at this point. We can no longer claim that Mansur is part of our... Oh good, that's part of our vassal anyway, so we don't really want to take their land. Why would I want to conquer my vassal? That wouldn't be very nice. Uh, Ganja is now a core. That's good, I guess. Everyone likes Ganja, I suppose. Er, der, der, der. All right. Anyway, moving on. So, uh, the Ottomans are actually making swift progress. Mo what terrifies me is that the Ottomans will actually conquer all the way into the Persian region here. I mean, I don't care what they conquer as long as they stay the heck out of Crimea. Fortunately, that belongs to Crimea. Uh, yeah, as long as they stay out of the Crimea or the Caucasia region and Persia. Actually, if they take this province, I'm boned because I'm gonna have to go to war with the Ottomans at some point. But nothing says I have to go to war with the Ottomans today or tomorrow or the next day. Uh, Commander of the Guard. Oh dear, Lithuania is fabricating claims on us. Can I fabricate more claims on you? No, I've already fabricated all the claims, but they have so many allies. Basically, what I'm probably going to have to do is, like, Novgorod looks pretty big, but I'm pretty sure... Oh my god. Oh wait, no, that's normally part of Novgorod. Like, the little finger of Scandinavia. Uh, let's actually take a quick look here. Like, what does Lithuania have, and what does Novgorod have? Because if we're going to if we're gonna be aggressive, we're going to attack Novgorod. Uh, they have 33,000. They don't have much manpower, but then again, neither do I. And, ba -ba -da -ba -ba, and Novgorod. Yeah, they have only no, oh, 9 of 16, so... Yeah, they basically have almost as many as me. That's unfortunate. Alright, we've converted people to the one true faith. That's good and grand and glorious. Oh my god. Our religious unity is terrible. <laughs> my god. Uh, is there anything we can do to increase our missionary strength? I need to have at least free admin, at least free military. And that's something else. Like, the problem is, as a horde, I feel like I never have enough points to actually even seriously consider, what's this? You want to peace out? Uh, I'll be the judge of that. Can I vassalize you? Damn, they're just a little bit too big. So basically, the Uzbeks are probably going to consume all of Perm. Uh, war reparations, which are probably not going to last very long, and all your money. I need money. I need lots of money. Lots and lots of money. And even that's probably not enough money. Alright. Sue for peace. Give me that. Give me all your money. You know, if I could afford Defender of the Faith and could do so without fearing that I would get wrecked by it. Oh my god, 23 development? It's really, really good. Not as good now that I've destroyed it, but 
Oh well. And now, our plan is to fabricate on Novgorod. So we can... Is there a Republic? I didn't know that. I feel like I should have known that, though. As if that's come up somewhere before. Actually, I, I probably have a war... Again, yeah, superiority. Lithuania would come in, though. So I probably don't want to do that. So let's fabricate on Torzok. Excellent. Uh, when is Kazan going to be finished? Uh, my mouse feels a little off today for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, let's see here. 77. Okay, and what is their liberty desire looking at? It is slowly creeping up a little bit, which scares me. Oh, we are making money again, though, so that's a good thing. As long as the tribes don't suddenly demand more land, which they might, but hopefully not. Well, there goes Perm. I feel terrible. Ter ah, terrible about that. Ah, I don't know. What's this? Lithuania's rivaled the map. Don't tell me Lithuania's planning on allying the Ottomans at some point. Now... There really is no logical reason for... Oh my god, no way. No, there is no way. There is no way they can make this work. I have never been able to get an alliance... Actually, that's not entirely true, but I can rarely get an alliance going when one of my allies is rivaled to the person I'm trying to get an ally with. So if this, if this unholy alliance works, then there's some shenanigans going on here. Plus, I should probably... Try my best to, um, oh, now the Mamluks are getting in on the action. And, oh, thank God, they, they stopped just short. Now, the thing is, the Mamluks are actually reasonably powerful, but the Ottomans are just so much more powerful. So, yeah, I'm not allying with the Mamluks. I tried that once in an off-camera game, and yeah, the Mamluks, apparently in real life, the Mamluks actually for a good long while were able to, like, they're the only thing slowing the Ottomans down, but I'm pretty sure historically the Ottomans did eventually win. And we're losing our claims over there, but yeah, they want some of my provinces, but I think I will, I'm going to try forming an alliance, because if I, if I had... What do you mean, minus 103? Golden Horde considers Ottoman province is to be of vital interest. Same two provinces as vital interest. Negative 22? My army is not that weak compared to yours. Alright, I will just... Do that. And what does that lower it down to? Just to 63. They are neutral towards me, though. I hate how nations judge me based on my naval strength when I actually don't have a navy at all. Like, it seems kind of silly for you to judge me based on my ability to form a navy when I'm a completely landlocked region. I mean, except for this lake here. Or wait, this is the Caspian Sea. Caspian Sea. Anyway, I mean, it seems kind of ridiculous to me. Why would you judge me on that when I don't have a navy in the first place? And I have no intention of ever having a navy. Oh no, we're losing money. We were just making money. Why are we suddenly losing it? Oh game, you confuse me sometimes with your logic. Might be that our inflation is going up. That is entirely possible. And probably some of our problems are that I'm hiring uh, advisors when I really don't have the money to afford them. But I kind of need them because it's the only way I can keep up with my various rivals and such. Uh... 54? I feel like it was lower a minute ago. But then again, I wasn't looking, so... There is that. And, uh, let's see. A truce of hosses ended. Oh, we can tech up. Oh, that's beautiful. And we can pick up our first idea group. I, I, I like picking up quantity, but... I feel that's probably a bad maneuver because of the fact that we actually do constantly need to be keeping our military up. I mean, what quantity would do for us is it would make us able to have a large, a much larger army and relatively cheaper. 
but I feel we can't really afford that right now. I mean, we're going to need exploration eventually, but that doesn't really help us right now. Part of me kind of wants to go for trade ideas, maybe. Yeah, because diplomatic ideas aren't usually as important. Usually. Of course, I'm kind of thinking maybe I want to pick up humanist or religious, considering the issues we're having here. I mean, neither of these help us reform the government, and we do need a lot of admin points. But then again, this will keep us from having rebels in the future, so maybe... Maybe even though it's kind of a dumb idea, because it'll also slow us down from teching up and getting our next idea group unlocked. Are we losing money again? My god, why, why do I keep losing money? I mean, that's kind of a silly question, because the answer is probably obvious that I just don't have the... Ah, I hate doing that. Anyway... Uh, let's see here. So, Gladier. That's one of my provinces, isn't it? It is. Alright. So, truce will expire uh, this month, in fact, with the Timurids. I don't touch the Timurids yet, though. Oh, wait. They are sort of dealing with rebel problems, but they haven't completely broke yet. Um, And, let's see here. Yeah, so our next target is probably going to be Muscovy, because they don't have any ally- wait, Perm still exists? Ah, oh, damn it, they were vassalized. I mean, I'm going to have to go to war with the Uzbeks eventually anyway, and the Uzbeks do have a tendency to fall apart over time, so there is that. Uh, our truce with the Timurids has ended, so theoretically we could go to war with them. But Muscovy is our next likely target. Only 18? And they have a neutral attitude towards me. Like, that annoys the heck out of me. Could I theoretically get Hungary? Like, Hungary looks like they're actually more likely than the Timurids, for instance. And they hate Poland. Who hates Lithuania again? The Mamluks. Well, Denmark specifically hates them. Is it at all possible to get an alliance going here? Probably not, because our navy is not that good. But it is ever so slightly more likely. Hmm. Are you still at war? No, you're at peace. I wonder if their army actually went to fight. Let's see here. Musk V has 11,000 of 16,000, so actually we have more numbers than them, so we could probably take Musk V. How is Lithuania doing? And I'm going to have to fight Lithuania eventually. I don't really want to, but I am going to have to. They have 23 of 42, so they're actually kind of weak right now. But I'm not going to attack them until I, I know for certain that I can beat them. I mean, I'd sooner betray no guy and conquer them. But, you know, that might also be a terrible, terrible idea. Oh, rebels, where? Wait, why didn't you warn me that... That was just... That's just bad form game. Not even letting me know about this until it's at 90%. Didn't even tell me. It was just... Oh, by the way, you might want to know that there's going to be rebels in a month. Uh, that's going to pop before I get down there, isn't it? I can feel it. I can taste it happening. What? How, how, how come you suddenly bumped up? Like, you saw that. They jumped, like... That was way too fast. A jump. What the hell happened? Like, I need to... I need to annex these people. What's this? Theodoro Separatists. Oh, that annoys the heck out of me. Mostly because it just shouldn't have happened. Because I didn't even get that warning until I was already at 90%, which seems very, very suspicious to me. Oh good, Russians are now accepted in my culture. That's good, I guess. 
Oh, good. Also, the uh, warning went away, so... Yeah. Oh, that must be why, because we lost a bunch of relations when... When we were not royal married to them or something. Ersk. Oh, yeah, I suppose I should start fabricating again over here. Oh, my God. Got all kinds of claims. Anyway, this episode's at the risk, as always, of running much too long, so... I'm going to wrap things up here. As always, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see all of you in the next video.